Basics are not SQL or Python. If you want to learn data engineering, you need to understand data fundamentals first. Before jumping on such robust language like Python, it's better to understand where you need to apply it and in which context. The beginning of my career started with Python and zero knowledge about data engineering. So instead of leveraging Python for, let's say, batch processing. I was wasting my time studying Django and Flask frameworks, which are cool, but not in 100% match. I can say that it was a complete waste of time, but I would take it. For that, I'm going to share with you concepts and approaches that are used in data engineering first. I'm gonna throw a lot of abbreviations on you guys. Here is the list of all the concepts mentioned in today's video. I'm using ScreenTile to showcase this beautiful mind map. I'm going to share the link below with more detailed information about each point and sources in case you're a deep diver. Originally, the offspring of data engineer was database administrator. They were managing SQL or relational databases, which organize data in rows and tables, ideal for complex queries and transactional applications. Operations. Then data varieties expanded. So NoSQL databases came into the picture to handle unstructured data like documents and real-time analytics, providing flexibility where traditional schemas did not fit. In the same way, graph databases which store data in nodes and edges are perfect for analyzing complex relationships. And vector databases are crucial in fields like machine learning uh, where high-performance data retrieval is essential. And it is on the verge of aligning with the Gen AI trend. But let's go back to offsprings and their SQL databases. Are we just throwing whatever we have in the database? Not really. First, we model. Data model means structuring your data into a format that is both efficient and usable. So we have star schema, where a central fact table links to several dimension tables, and the snowflake schema, which is a more normalized version, reducing data redundancy. Then 3NF, third normal form. Here we reduce redundancy and dependency and make tables normal. Um, what I mean by that? There are a couple of techniques or forms like 1NF, first normal form, like tables should contain only atomic values, then 2NF, 3NF, and etc. We have data vault as well. It's a hybrid of star and 3NF because here we have hubs, key business concepts, links, associations between hubs, and satellites. It's descriptive data like dimensions. It's great for historical tracking and flexible in schema change. And speaking of historical tracking, as data changes over time, how we track and manage these changes becomes crucial. Slowly changing dimensions, SCD, deal with managing historical data changes without losing the history. We can do that with overwriting and forgetting the rows or adding new rows and marking them with timestamp or adding more columns, etc. Whereas change data capture, CDC, focuses on identifying and capturing changes in real time, allowing systems to stay up to date. So is the knowledge of databases enough? Not only. You will work mostly with data warehouses. It's like databases on steroids. Now they often use distributed systems to manage the increasing volume, variety, and velocity of data, the three Vs of data. You need to understand here deeply the CAP theorem, which says that the system can only provide two out of three guarantees consistency, availability, and partition tolerance. In simple terms, it's like saying in a network of computers, they cannot have perfect uptime, perfect data uniformity, and perfect resilience to network failures all at once. You need to pick two. Uh, why so complicated? Evolution. Data warehouses matured. In short, we went from SMP to MPP to EPP. And what does it mean? It all started in the 70s with SMP or Symmetric Multiprocessing Hardware for database systems, which executed instructions using shared memory and disks. But then, in 1984, Teradata delivered its first production database using MPP, Massively Parallel Processing. It's like SMP server accepts user SQL statements, which are distributed across a number of independently running database servers, that acts together as a single clustered machine. Each node is a separate computer with its own CPU, memory, and directly attached disk. It was a blast, but had many drawbacks in terms of complexity and cost, data distribution, and lack of elasticity. Then Hadoop kicked in. Hadoop is a complementary technology, not a replacement here. It's similar to MPP architecture, but with a twist. The name server acts as a directory lookup service to point the SQL query to the node, upon data will be stored and queried from. Plus, MPP platform distributed individual rows across the cluster, and Hadoop simply breaks the data into blocks, which are then replicated. Then the next breakthrough was EPP, Elastic Parallel Processing, which is literally separating compute and storage layers. Unlike the MPP cluster in which data storage is directly attached to the each node, the EPP architecture separates the layers, which can be scaled up 
or scaled out independently. Nowadays, all major players like Snowflake, Databricks, AWS, Google, Microsoft are using those for their data warehouses under the hood. Unlike the SMP system, which is inflexible in size, and both Hadoop and MPP solutions, which are at risk of over-provisioning, EPP is super flexible. So now let's talk about big data and its analysis. There are two types of data processing systems used for different purposes. OLAP, online analytical processing, and OLTP, online transaction processing. OLAP is all about analysis. Think of column-oriented data warehouse. It's optimized for read operations like complex queries with aggregating and analyzing data. These systems are optimized for speed and querying. OLTP is focused on handling a large number of short transactions quickly. It's optimized for write operations, insert, update, delete. Think of processing when you book a flight online or make a purchase. Here, data integrity and speed are at maximum. But how do we move the data? We have common approaches for that, ETL or ELT. ETL extracts data from various sources, transforms it into a consistent format, and loads into a target system or data warehouse. ELT, almost the same as before, but after extracting the load data in data lake as is, and then transform as needed. So our raw data is secured and analysis could be performed later on. Here you have it, dears. Curious to know if you like this format, please tell me if you want more. And don't forget to check out the detailed mind map below to deep dive into the each topic. Until then, stay curious.